Hello colleagues, this is Fred Mednick. Just moments after we completed those compelling descriptions of what's outside our windows, you jumped into a rich discussion of education in a global context, a topic worthy of multiple courses and degree programs, no less a few readings. But like any great museum or piece of music, these topics are worth revisiting in cycles. So the more we look at a painting or hear great music, the more they reveal. We're going to reveal the strategies and opinions in education and global development once more as we piece together projects that would have direct bearing on our own backyard. The readings and the rich interactions with colleagues might have changed you or you may have changed others over the last couple of weeks. We should all hear about it and if you need any help, any one of you has 50 other colleagues to rely upon. Back to the subject at hand. We've all heard about breakthroughs in health, e-government, girls' education, transparency and the rule of law, as well as the impact of technology on accessibility, affordability, and the availability of information. According to the UN, the eight Millennium Development Goals form a blueprint agreed to by all the world's countries and all the world's leading development institutions, that they have galvanized unprecedented efforts to meet the needs of the world's poorest. Pessimists beg to differ, and they do so adamantly. Quality basic education is hardly universal, they say. While private schools proliferate, many public schools languish. Corruption is rampant. Girls are excluded. In fact, we are not even close in to reaching any of the goals set by the MDGs for 2015. When you look at sort of the past 30 to 40 years, it's basically been um, a, cat you know, a categorical disappointment. Um, Paul Collier, who uh, was my PhD supervisor, um, wrote a fantastic book called The Bottom Billion. And uh, he talks about how Africa is shearing off from the rest of the world. So you're seeing economic growth and all these amazing statistics of, you know, poverty being cut by half. China now lends to the United States. You know, you see serious uh, improvements in education and so on. In Africa, you know, we have per capita incomes worse than they were in the colonial period. Um, you know, in 1970, 10% of Africans were living on less than a dollar a day. Today, 70% of Africans live on less than two dollars a day. Um, you know, uh, life expectancy has, has come down over this period. In, in Zambia, uh, aside from HIV AIDS, but also infant mortality, uh, life expectancy is 38. Um, I mean, this is completely unacceptable. Um, and at the same time, you know, over a trillion dollars of aid money has gone um, to these countries. So, you know, what kind of system is it that is allowed to perpetuate for 60 years um, with very poor results, where we're rewarding bad behavior. Eric and I are excited to learn about your perspectives on these issues from outside your window and inside your classroom and from around the world. We hope you think academically and we hope you continue to rely upon each other for your own deeper understanding so that our work informs our practice. I'm convinced that brains are evenly distributed around the world and there's no better example than this class. Enjoy!